Hi, I'm Julia M. Spencer, real estate advisor, investor, and enthusiast. We're standing in front of my one of my rental houses here in um, in a town in Georgia where I have several. Um, this house right here I bought purely for investment purposes. It was a very cheap house to buy because it's kind of like in an older, more established neighborhood, kind of like in the middle of the street, so we're moving. Um, the good thing about this property is it's very close to a huge employment complex here in middle Georgia, um, Robbins Air Force Base, which is um, a huge employer in the area. So there's a lot of employment, there's a lot of stores, um, a lot of infrastructure, easy access to interstates. And this house was extremely cheap, purchased it for about $58,000 uh, about eight years ago. I've been holding on to it ever since. It's consistently rented for seven to eight hundred dollars, well about seven hundred dollars a month. Right now it's renting for eight hundred. I have a maintenance agreement with the tenant to upkeep it and put at least a hundred dollars a month into the property. This is something that I wrote in my leases. My leases are very specific on these older kinds of houses because I don't want to do a lot of maintenance on these kinds of houses. So I encourage the tenants to be more self-sufficient. I give them cheaper rent, which for me is a great advantage. I don't have to deal with the small problems. And the tenants feel like they're more of a homeowner because they can, you know, they can, of course, with approval, paint the inside or add things or change the flooring. And it makes them feel more in control, makes them be happier tenants and which results in them staying longer in the property and not um, switching all the time so I don't have to, to turn around in tenants. Of course, as you know, if tenants leave, every time a tenant leaves and a new one comes, it costs me money. So I wanna to try to keep good tenants in there as much as possible. I have a lot of information on how to find and keep good tenants on my website. I also have information on how to write good leases and find good managers. This property here, is uh, was built in the fifth in the 50s it's very solid it's uh, one of my larger ones it's uh, close to 800 1800 square feet most of the ones i buy are around 12 or 1300 but because it's so old everything's been more or less updated over the years we we add a little bit every once in a while and change things around but in all intents and purposes it's been pretty solid rental i make a lot of cash flow on it Another thing that I want to add is that when we purchased this property, we bought it with zero money down. Now normally you would have to pay closing costs and um, uh, the fees to, to the lender to finance a property like this. But the initial first tenants, they wanted to keep it and be um, later on purchase it from us. So they paid all the closing costs for us. Those were the first tenants. So we basically just put our name down, our good credit. We purchased the property, we wrote them a three-year lease, and they paid for all of our closing. Those are kinds of things that you can do before you purchase a house. If you can find tenants that want to live in a house before you purchase it and find the tenants, the tenants can then find the properties that they want to buy. And there's a lot of other strategies that you can use to find good tenants and good properties. Go to my website today at www.juliamspencer.com. M stands for money. Download your free guide to real estate investing today and make sure you sign up for my newsletter. Thank you. For your free guide to real estate investing, visit juliammspencer.com.